Hello friends, today I will talk to you about disease of the parathyroid gland that is hyper and hypoparathyroid. So, first of all hyperparathyroid, we know very well we have two mainly primary and secondary hyperparathyroid. What are the cause of primary? It is adenoma is the most important cause. 96 percent it is adenoma and usually it involves single gland and I hope all of you know there are four parathyroid glands which lie in the posterior aspect of thyroid, but usually adenoma occur in the single gland. And in primary calcium level is high, phosphate is low. PTH is high. Now, secondary, any cause of prolonged hypocalcemia will lead to secondary hyperparathyroid. So, in secondary, we have two types. One is either due to chronic renal failure or it is due to nutritional deficiency. In nutritional deficiency, what we see in rickets and osteomalacia. Okay, so now what happened in these? Calcium is reduced. In fact, as I told you, the most important parameter of secondary is low calcium. Now, in CRF, calcium is phosphate is high, but phosphate is reduced in nutritional type of hyperparathyroid. But PTH level is high in all the three conditions. It means what in nutshell what all you have to remember if you have to differentiate between primary and secondary you go by calcium level. But if you want to differentiate between nutritional and CRF then you go for phosphate level got it the PTH level is high in all the three conditions. So, in primary hyperparathyroid, what are the clinical features? We have a in GIT, we have a nausea, vomiting and constipation very, very important. Normally in most of the time when we talk about a side effect of drug, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, but it is constipation here. Point to be noted is a very frequently asked MCQ. Polyuria, this you need to understand why polyuria occurs. For that, we go to basic concepts. Basic concept, this is a very, very frequently asked question. So, this is a nephron, and here is the ADH which absorbs only water. Okay. But when hypercalcemia occurs, the tubules become resistant to action of ADH. In nutshell, it leads to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus because tubules are resistant to action of ADH. This is the reason of why polyuria occurs in these patients. Now, patient has bony pains and abdominal pains right and psychosis they are the most important feature mnemonic what i can give is c p p p is the mnemonic for easy remembrance c for constipation p for polyuria p for pain and p for psychosis they are the most important thing that you got to remember now, what you get in ECG? You get short QT interval, very frequently asked question. But the most accurate investigation, that means investigation of choice is technetium scan by which we can locate that tumor, where the actual location of tumor is there. <coughs> now, what are the X-ray finding? What we get in hyperparathyroid in X-ray? we get 
bony cyst. Number two, you get osteitis fibrosa, brown tumor. This is very very important. Is this question came last year exam in the latest exam also? So let's see. Now what happened? Suppose this the bone is there. Suppose here is the bone, and as the calcium is and calcium and phosphate are reabsorbed by in hyperparathyroid, a empty space is created. Now this empty space may get filled with the liquid. We get bone cyst. At time this empty space may get fibrous. What we get is osteitis fibrosa. But if you do the X-ray of the bone, you may get some shadow which look like tumor. It is not a tumor, but look like a tumor. What we call as brown tumor. The brown tumor is not a tumor, but look like a tumor in hyperparathyroid. The question what came last year was. Brown tumor is seen in answer shall be hyperparathyroid. Then on X-ray of the skull, you get pepper pot appearance. Suppose this skull X-ray is there, so you get multiple dots type of thing. What we call as pepper pot appearance is seen. Or again, very frequently asked question. You also get resorption of terminal phalanx, and of course. Rarification on the radial side of finger. This is virtually diagnostic of hyperparathyroid. This is the most important finding. Now, how to treat a case of acute hypercalcemia? In acute hypercalcemia, is a medical emergency. Patient should be hospitalized in the ICU. You give IV saline. And you give for some might. Why? Why you want to give saline? Because patient is dehydrated. Why? Because of polyuria, and that's why patient may have in the in a in a uh, hyperparathyroid patient, patient may even have polydipsia also because of large amount of urine in being passed. You give for some might. For some might is a lube diuretic. It causes loss of calcium in the urine. Okay. So this is what we go for acute, but in chronic cases we use biphosphonate, prednisolone, calcitonin. Calcitonin is, is given by nasal root. It is the fastest acting drug, but it has got short term action only. So it is not a very poca. Of course, we use only in some cases, not in all the routine cases. We can even go for dialysis also. We have a drug called Sinacalcet. We can use especially in secondary hyperparathyroid. Strontium is a one drug which increases osteoblastic activity and reduces osteoclastic activity. So we use in hyperparathyroid. This is how we are going to treat a case of. Hyperparathyroid. Now let's see what are the other causes of hypercalcemia. This is a very very important question. So causes of hypercalcemia are it occurs then in Addison disease, endocrine condition having hypercalcemia, hyperthyroid. And pheochromocytoma. Certain cancers like renal cell cancer, squamous cell lung cancer, hepatoma, multiple myeloma, sarcoidosis, okay, prolonged immobilization. This this very very important question, okay? Very very and drugs like thiazide, lithium. This is the very very always a question come from this table, okay? 
Well, I like to discuss sarcoidosis. This question came last year. It is a granulomatous disease. In fact, the question was what is the cause of hypercalcemia in sarcoidosis? The answer is any granulomatous disease like sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, beryliosis, the, these tissue have inherent tendency to make more and more vitamin D. And that is why increased vitamin D lead to increased synthetic uh, resorption of calcium. Right? This was the question last year. Well, the final treatment, if you locate the tumor, final, finally the treatment is always surgery because you have to remove the tumor, but this is done only in some cases. We initially we always try to ma manage medically. Now we talk about hypoparathyroid, which manifests as tetany. Tetany can occur due to low calcium, low magnesium, and any cause of alkalosis. Okay especially hyperventilation which lead to respiratory alkalosis. Now, what are the features of tetany? In the children, it is carpopedal spasm, convulsion and strider. But in adults, additional finding is there may be tingling in the mouth and feet also. Okay. Now, what are the signs of latent tetany? Latent. Latent tetany is trousu sign and chovastic signs. Now, how to treat a case of acute hypocalcemia? Suppose patient is having convulsion or patient is having severe problem, then you may have to go for IV calcium. But if patient is to having vomiting, which lead to metabolic alkalosis then in that case you can give IV saline. But if hyperventilation is occurring which lead to respiratory alkalosis, then you tie a bag on the mouth of the patient, patient will exhale the air and rebreathe the same air. So, rebreathe from same bag, rebreathe from same bag. Okay. This is how we are going to manage a case of uh, hypo or tetany depending on what the cause is. Now, we have called pseudo hypoparathyroid and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroid. These two are congenital disorder and in both tissues are resistant to action of PTH. Okay. In both the case, the child is mental retardation is there and typically fourth and fifth metacarpal and metatarsal are short. This is seen in both the condition, but what is the difference between the two? In pseudo hypoparathyroid and pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroid, in both the condition, PTH level is high, but calcium level is low in pseudo and normal in pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroid. And the genomic imprinting occurs. So, if the disease comes from mother, it is pseudo. And if the gene come from father, it is pseudo pseudo, and this is known as genomic imprinting is set. Right, sir? So let's revise. Let's see how much time we need to revise entire thyroid disorders. So in primary adenoma, secondary CRF nutrition and calcium high, calcium low. Phosphate low, phosphate high, phosphate low, PTH high in all. The clinical feature const CPP, constipation, polyuria, pain, dormant bony pain, psychosis, short QT interval, tachycium scan is the investigation of choice. In acute hypercalcemia, saline and fusamide, 
chronic biphosphonate prednisolone calcitonin given nasal root dialysis we can use simacalcid and strontium x ray bonuses osteofibrosa brown tumor pepper pot appearance terminal falling resorption and rarefication of the radial side of finger is the diagnostic other cause of hypercalcemia it's a disease hyper hyper thyroid and few in cancer renal cell carcinoma squamous cell lung cancer hepatoma multiple myeloma sarcoidosis prolonged immobilization and thyroid and lithium tetany occurs due to low calcium low magnesium alkalosis carpal tunnel spasm convulsion strider tingling latent tetany tosis cholestic treatment iv calcium vomiting saline hyperventilation rebreed from same back in pseudo and pseudo both pth high low calcium normal calcium imprinting mother and father so friends it took me only 90 seconds to revise the whole parathyroid okay so thank you very much for watching this video uh, how do you are liking the uh, lectures please do inform me on the messenger and if you have any particular liking of topic please do share your thoughts with me i'll be too happy to uh, include your topic also many of you have already joined me by uh, on my whatsapp but some of you still have not then you can join me by sending your name, your college of MBBS and your college is in which city, your, you are in which year of MBBS intern or post intern or your email. You send this information to 996828832, okay. So, I will be sending you daily last minute revision points and I will be sending you lot of other uh, motivational things. Friends, the last minute revision point what I am sending to you, you read all these. Believe me, a 30 to 40 or maybe 50 percent of the question of your need will be based on these points only. Okay, huge percentage, even one question can change the fate of any student. But I am asking, say, huge amount of question will be based on this last mid revision point. In fact, all these last mid revision points are from our book, books of 2017. Okay, these books are available on highly discounted price. You can visit our website www.db mci.com okay so thank you again for watching this video send me your uh, feedback i'll be too happy to help you out in all the possible way thank you very much